guys, it's Kelly Latavola here and I'm back with another video for W Plus 9. Today we are going to be talking about um, freehand watercolor florals. So I have a couple of sets here I'm going to use to help me out. Uh, this is the He is Risen stamp set. I showed you the Sympathy Lilies, but I didn't end up using them. And then I'm also using the No One Else stamp set. Um, so for the first card, I'm going to use some stamps to help me with my placement. I picked the Lily from the He Is Risen set because it is a large bloom. Um, it is, this set is an Easter set, but I actually love this Lily and I totally plan on using it in the future. But right now I'm just using it to help me out because I have a hard time, um, apparently holding on to my cardstock, but uh, I do have a hard time kind of with floral arrangements. And so I struggle with that. So I don't wanna just like freehand it. I wanna have some idea of what it is that I'm going to be painting. And since the flowers that I wanna paint are pretty large, uh, I wanted to have a flower stamp that reflected that. One quick note before we talk about the painting, I was stamping in um, antique linen ink from, uh, or distress ink because it'll melt away uh, once I put the water on top. So for this one, I'm just doing really loose, just general flowers. Um, and so I put down kind of like a circle of water and then I am using um, quidacridone purple here. Um, and I, I didn't mix it with anything. I'm just using the regular purple and I'm kind of putting down little C shapes. And then as um, needed, I can go back in with darker pigment and just continually add those little C shapes. Um, Dawn tells me all the time that your brain will turn anything into a flower. Um, and that is true. Um, so not bad advice. So even if you don't really love what you're doing when you're doing it, um, just give it a minute because watercolors change as they dry and the way, you know, the highlights and the lowlights, the, the, the values change. So here I wanted to put in a little bit of um, Quinn Rose in there just to have some differentiation in the color. And then I'm going to move on to the next flower. So for this one, instead of just putting like one circle, I completely filled in the circle. So this is more of a wet on wet technique. Um, and I decided to do like a pinky peach color. Um, this is the quidacridone gold mixed with the um, the rose color. That's how I got this orange. And I'm kind of doing the same thing. I'm just doing those C shapes. I'm not completely filling it in. I want those white breaks. Those white breaks are going to act as my highlights. And then I'm going to add in some more of the rose to my base color to, again, get a little bit of color variation. For the um, third one, I am using Indian yellow. I think it's Indian yellow. Um, and then I'm going to do the shading with the uh, quadacridone gold. But here I actually did a wet on dry technique. So I didn't put down any water at all. I started with my little teeny tiny C shapes. And then I'm going to go back in with a uh, damp paintbrush and kind of blend those out. This was actually the one I liked the least. The one I liked the best actually was the combination one, which was what the first one I did where I just did the circle of water and then the C shapes. I just felt like this one um, here was maybe a little bit messier. And that could also be because I used the yellow. And so um, because it's yellow on, you know, white cardstock, which by the way, I'm working on Canson uh, Aqua watercolor paper. Um, but I don't know if it's just because there wasn't enough, um, I guess, contrast for me, maybe with the yellow one that I didn't really love it. I'm going to very, very generally paint in some leaf shapes. I'm using a mixture of um, sap green and ultramarine turquoise to do this. Um, I'm not really being terribly careful about the shading. I just want some uh, darker and lighter values. This whole thing is supposed to be, is meant to be very loose. I had some um, of my followers on my uh, on YouTube ask me about, um, I call them blobby flowers, um, about painting some, some blobby flowers. And so I wanted to do this video um, to kind of show that uh, if you would like more definition, you can do what I'm doing here. Again, I'm not, it's not terribly detailed. I'm just adding in a little bit of darker pigment to help give those flowers some shape. And for the peach and the yellow, I think it really did need it um, for me. But I struggle with loose watercolors. I'm I'm very controlled. I want, I want all the details. Um, but that doesn't mean that it's not pretty this way. 
And um, so for this one, I'm not going to use a stamp. I'm, I'm just going to freehand them. And here's how I guess I have found the best way that I like to do it. I put down, I'm going for a wreath shape. I put down a couple of blobs of color. That's it, guys. You saw it. They were blobs. I'm going to rinse off my brush. I'm going to pick up clean water and I'm going to draw a circle around them. This is going to give them very organic edges. I won't really have any control over the shape that it makes. Um, and I like that. Like, yes, I could go back in and be finicky and pull out color here, add color there, or whatever, but I'm not going to do that. I added just a drop of that Indian yellow to the centers, again, looking for that color differentiation. And now I'm just going to um, draw in some leaves. And basically all I'm doing is just kind of putting, I'm picking up the color, this is sap green. And all I'm really doing is two rounded shapes. So one's going to be round to the left and one's going to be round to the right and then I'm meeting them in the middle. That's how I'm doing the leaves. The other way you can do it, um, especially with a brush like this, this is a number eight round brush, is that you can set your brush on the paper at its um, point and then press it down toward the back and it will actually make its own leaf shape just because of how uh, the bristles are formed. So I wanted to add in a couple of other little branches. Again, this isn't anything that's, you know, super fancy. They're very loose, not a lot of control here. Um, but I think it was a good exercise for me uh, to see that things still can be um, very pretty, even when you kind of let it go. So it, on those um, longer leaf shapes, I wanted to kind of create a secondary flower. So I've picked up some of the yellow and I'm really just doing a bunch of little dots and that's going to create the look of a flower without me really having to do any work. Um, I'm going to add just a teeny tiny little bit of shading to some of the leaves here. And as I'm going, this is one of the things to keep in mind when you're painting something yourself. As I'm going, I'm constantly reevaluating what's going on, whether or not I like the colors, whether or not I like the shape of the wreath. Sometimes I needed to add in other leaves or other flowers to balance it out. In order to pull my little blobs together, I'm going to do that same kind of C shape that I did before and almost create like little mini roses. Um, but again, not being terribly careful, you don't need to be, your brain's kind of going to fill that in. I wanted there to be a little bit more pink. I felt like it got very heavy with the green. So I went in and just did like general little, almost like tulip shapes, um, just to kind of fill those in. Now these sentiments from the No One Else stamp set, um, I love them. I think this is maybe the second or third, second or third video I've done with them. I think they're awesome, first of all, because I just like the sentiments. Uh, I like what they say, but I think that they're really different in their layout, and I love sentiments that are large enough to carry a whole card, and these definitely are. So these are, um, you know, larger sentiments like this are great to have. If you're going to do something like, you know, paint your own um, florals, because it gives it some structure, um, just because of the, I guess, the the difference between the hard and soft edges. So you have these very loose, very soft um, watercolor florals in the background, and then this bold sentiment, and the, the contrast of them works really, really nicely. So I used black W plus nine dye ink to stamp these, and I did have to stamp them twice because I'm working on watercolor paper. Um, and then that's actually it. That's all I did. Those are um, both of the cards, and I really love the way they came out. So I hope that you're inspired to kind of give this a try for yourself. Um, and I will catch you guys on the next video. Bye.